Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending March 11th. And thank you for sending in these stories. The first story is from Bob H. The second one is from Tom H. And the third one is from John B. I'm going to try to keep it to three stories. I got a little bit long on some of the last TDD reports, and I know sometimes past 10 minutes people don't tend to want to watch as much. So I'm going to keep this one to three stories. First one is from Space.com. Could mysterious cosmic light flashes be powering alien spacecraft? Kind of didn't expect this from Space.com, but I guess more and more uh, YouTubers, along with more and more regular news sources, are getting into the kind of drama news. But it it says astronomers have cataloged just 20 or so of these brief, super bright flashes known as FRBs, and their source remains a mystery. Bizarre flashes of cosmic light may actually be generated by advanced alien civilizations as a way to accelerate interstellar spacecraft to tremendous speeds, a new study suggests. They're called fast radio bursts. Now, personally, myself, and even I think in this article, if you read through the whole article, they don't really believe that that's the most likely explanation. That's just one possible in a, in a bunch of very unlikely explanations, that's one possibility. But um, they never do actually touch on something that I actually logically am thinking of myself. Just like wind comes from different directions too. It doesn't have to be something created by anybody, but you just harness the wind power to drive sailing ships different directions. It could very well be the alien uh, spacecraft are being powered by these flashes, even though they're not generating them. They're just harnessing these uh, fast radio bursts to uh, actually power the craft. All you have to do is just uh, wait for the right, right wind for the right direction, wait for the right fast radio burst from the right direction, open your solar sail to your spacecraft, and go on your way. So if that's even happening to me, the way more likely explanation would be that these uh, alien spacecrafts are being powered by these natural um, radio bursts more than anything else. Uh, it says here, and more in the article, you can read the whole thing, but I'll just give you one more part of the article. One potential artificial origin, according to the new study, might be a gigantic radio transmitter built by intelligent aliens. So Loeb and lead author Manus V. Lingam of Harvard University investigated the feasibility of this possible explanation. And then you can see an artist's illustration, too, of one of these radio bursts actually powering a light sail. Now, I'm not saying we might not even start with something like that, too. I know they've done some testing on very powerful laser bursts to kind of help out the solar sails, too, along with the sun. But then you also have the problem when you get far enough away from the sun, you don't get enough energy to really help with a light sail that much. But if you could harness some pretty powerful laser bursts and maybe even station satellite lasers along the way, say, uh, uh, orbiting around Jupiter or maybe Neptune or something like that, they could give them even another uh, laser boost with that, too. So if you get a chance, check out this next and check out that article. And this next one is from KETV and a lot of this is from NASA too. NASA considers magnetic shield to help Mars grow its atmosphere. Now I was thinking more myself of they were going to put some kind of satellites or something like that and uh, perform uh, a magnetic shield around the planet itself, but this is more interesting and probably more doable, their idea. My other alternate idea too was just to put up some domes, uh, dome cities, and then have them magnetically enclosed or put a magnetic field on top of the dome itself which would be another less expensive way to do it than the whole planet. But according to this simulation model, what they're going to do is out way um, in front of Mars towards the sun, have a place where they set up a dipole magnetic field with like a dipole antenna and then somehow provide it with the electrical energy. And they say it would actually, well, it says, according to simulation models, this shield that they would put between the sun and Mars, um, it would... Uh, it could help Mars achieve half of the atmospheric pressure of Earth in a matter of years with protection from solar winds. Frozen CO2 at Mars polar caps would start to sublimate or turn directly into gas from a solid. The greenhouse effect would start to fill Mars with a thin atmosphere and heat the planet, mainly at the equator, uh, at which point the vast stores of ice under the poles could melt and flood the world with liquid water. They said it could maybe uh, cat recapture about one-seventh of the ancient ocean that Mars had at one time. This is some truly fantastic stuff reminiscent of Kim Stanley Robinson's Red Mars Trilogy, but it is theoretically possible, and it just might maybe be a step towards terraforming Mars. So, yeah, a little bit easier way to do it by just putting it uh, way out in space and stuff like that. You don't necessarily, all you have to do is just have it so that it deflects the solar wind and doesn't necessarily have to have something surrounding the whole planet and operating continuously. So actually a pretty good concept and idea. That's from KETV.com. And then last up, this is, let me scroll to the top here, from 
AlexRoy144.com, Starsky Robotics unveiled a self-driving truck that could kill Uber's subsidiary auto. Now, I don't really think it's a, it's going to kill Uber and their trucks, but uh, what they're doing, to, what they're trying to, to come up with is uh, robotic controls to put on a conventional truck and also to keep as many truck drivers employed as possible, whereas I think the other line that they're talking about with the uh, auto thing and Uber is making the trucks so that they're basically just... Uh, the trucks themselves are built self-driving and they can also possibly use a driver as a backup this is something you could lease this equipment and it looks like if you see in the video that you can scroll down and see the video it looks kind of like what they set up in Mythbusters where they would put actuators on the steering wheel to help with the steering actuators on the pedals and then obviously some kind of sensors so you could uh, lease this to uh, put on your truck for a while and what their idea is since they're already behind I guess something like a hundred thousand trucking jobs that are needed this year that are going unfulfilled. What they would like to see eventually is the truckers take over supervisory positions so you would actually set at some kind of a control center maybe closer to where you live and you would be in charge of two or three of these trucks and these trucks can handle almost everything about they say somewhere around 80 to 85 percent of the time these trucks can do fine on their own but with somebody monitoring it if the truck gets into a problem or would normally have to pull over or stop or something like that the guy can actually take over and remote pilot these trucks from a control center and just keep the loads going and everything like that. So it would be more like a truck driver would be semi-supervising two or three trucks um, at any one time. And I'll just read a couple of paragraphs here. One peculiarity of self-driving technology is that while automakers proudly brag about investing billions to catch up with Silicon Valley's efforts, truck manufacturers have been largely quiet, if not downright reluctant. That's because of the politics of the trucking industry. One of the largest employers in the United States is a min minefield even larger than that of the taxi industry, as you don't need to use Travis Kalanick to show how badly Uber's handled the matter. So yeah, as long as you can keep it, keep the truckers satisfied that their jobs aren't going away and they will just be replaced with jobs where they can stay closer to home, uh, but even get more stuff delivered and not have a shortage anymore, I think this could possibly work out. So anyway, hope I help keeping it a little bit um, shorter this week with just three stories. I'm going to try to do as many as I can. Sometimes I just won't be able to help it if there's if there's four stories that are really important and they're topical and they're uh, time worthy. And they would, you know, possibly not mean that much if I waited. I still may go with four stories. But anyway, take care, everybody. Thank you for everybody that contributed. I've still got some more material for next week, but I can always use more. So take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.